I'm sure you've seen the title. And given my videos going live two months after launch, I'm also sure that you've watched a lot of coverage of the S22 Ultra. So what do you think that one major issue I'm talking about is? Do you think it's throttle gate, battery life, or something else? Leave a comment down below right now and let's see if you can get it right. Don't jump to the end of the video, be honest, and let's see if you can predict what is that issue that I'm gonna be talking about. Cause I think I do have a unique take on the situation. Anyways guys, before we get to all that, my name's Ash, you're watching C4E Tech, and if you do end up liking what you see here, thumbs up, subscribe, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon, and let's get started. First, let's start with the positives. What Samsung's done right here, and there is a lot that they've absolutely nailed with the S22 Ultra. This phone fills a note-sized void left in Samsung's lineup. For all intents and purposes, this is a Galaxy Note. It's got that S Pen that's better than ever, it's got that squared off form factor, and even looks closer to a Note 20 Ultra than a S21 Ultra. The fact that Samsung's managed to provide the S Pen on a S series phone without compromising on the battery capacity or making the phone unnecessarily bulky, now that's a huge pro for me. And the S Pen here, it's an absolute pleasure to use. They've got the response time down to 2.8 milliseconds from nine, and all the S Pen features that we've seen in the past, like being able to quickly cut out a part of the screen and share it, take down notes and have the handwriting converted to text, create GIFs, using the S Pen as a remote trigger for the camera, they're all present and accounted for here. Now before we move on, a quick shout out to video sponsor 28mobile.com. If you wanna import a phone that's not available in your market, definitely do check them out. They ship quick, are professional, and usually have a lot of hard to get phones listed. If you have not checked them out yet, hey, go ahead, do it right now. I'll leave a link in the description below. Now coming back, the S22 Ultra is a large phone. It's also quite heavy at 228 grams. This combination means it's not really something you're gonna be using single-handed a lot. Reaching all four corners of the display with a phone in one hand is gonna take a whole lot of hand gymnastics. But you can say that about most flagships these days. So it's not a knock against the S22 Ultra. This is a beautifully crafted phone. It feels very nice and premium in hand. And it's not just the way it looks or feels. You actually have good protection. Here you've got Gorilla Glass Victus Plus to both the front and back, which is the best available in the market today. The way the sides curve, it ensures that the phone feels quite easy to use. The buttons are placed exactly where you'd expect them to be. They're clicky and tactile. We get wireless charging support and IP68 rating for water and dust resistance. And the weight, it's quite evenly distributed and overall the phone feels very well balanced. I also happen to be in the minority with respect to the camera array to the back. I've seen a lot of people say that this kind of takes away character that the S21 Ultra had, but to me, I love how minimal it makes the back look. And the availability of green and burgundy as color options mean it's not bland, but just minimal. A royal, refined look, if I might. That said, there is a negative with this camera uh, placement. The cameras here, they do pick up dust and pocket lint quite easily and are a pain to clean. Not a big issue for people like me who always use cases with their phones, but if you're someone who likes using your phone naked, it might be something worth keeping in mind. Now, underneath the hood, the S22 Ultra is powered by Samsung's own Exynos 2200 or Qualcomm's flagship Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 SoC. Both are very powerful and quite capable of doing whatever it is that you'd want your phone to. Now, there have been some reports of Samsung throttling apps on their phones to extend battery, and while it might theoretically be true, I honestly never noticed the S22 Ultra miss a beat. It's always been a pleasure to use, and One UI 4.1 built it up Android 12, it's been really good. That's also thanks in large to the Dynamic AMOLED 2X panel on here. The S22 Ultra sports a beautiful 6.8 inch display. This is the best panel Samsung has ever produced, and given almost every major flagship today sports a Samsung AMOLED panel, this is by far the best display you're gonna find on any smartphone today. It has a Quad HD Plus resolution with that 120Hz refresh and a peak brightness of 1750 nits, meaning using it outdoors poses no issues whatsoever. Now underneath this display is an ultrasonic fingerprint scanner that is positioned just right and is very quick to respond. There's also face unlock via that 40 megapixel selfie camera that's equally quick. And since we touched upon it, the selfies themselves, they were very impressive too, quite sharp and detailed with accurate skin tones. Anyways, coming back to the display, Samsung's also utilized second generation LTPO technology to vary the refresh between one to 120 Hertz for better battery efficiency. 
And yeah, there is a 5000 mAh battery on the inside and it performed great for me with moderate to intense use. I was easily able to get through a full day on a single charge. Well, it might not be as good as the battery performance on the S21 Ultra, probably due to the screen being brighter or the SoC being more powerful. I don't think battery life is something you gotta worry about here. The charging situation on the other hand is not quite as good. The S22 Ultra technically supports up to 45 watts of charging, but realistically it charges at 25 watts and that's it. We've seen multiple reports confirm that the 45 watt charger doesn't necessarily charge the phone any faster. So expect about an hour to full charge, which is decent, but pales in comparison to what else is happening in the market today. Most brands are offering much higher charging speeds for their flagships, and that kinda takes a little bit of sheen off the S22 Ultra. And when you take into account the fact that these fancy 80, 120, and 150 watt charging brakes are being included in the box, it feels like charging is one area where the, I mean, this phone is not really ultra. I mean, it's badly pro. But then again, there is another area, a more important one in my humble opinion, where Samsung is so far ahead of the competition, and that would be with optics. We once again get four cameras, a 108 megapixel primary, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, and a pair of 10 megapixel telephotos. And I absolutely adore the images that the S22 Ultra shot. Under good lighting conditions, the primary camera does very well. Zoom in and you can see all that fine detail. The images are quite beautifully exposed, colors remain natural, and the dynamic range is excellent. Not just with the primary, even with the ultra wide. Now this is no crazy 150 degree ultra wide, uh, but it's probably the best ultra wide you're gonna get on a smartphone. The pair of telephotos are also quite excellent. Both like the primary are paired with optically stabilized lenses. So even when you say shoot 100X with the 10X telephoto, you still get results that look like this. Maybe they aren't images you would share on social media, but I definitely found them useful. Say when I wanted to read some text that was far away, I wanted to give someone directions to go somewhere locally. And anyways, the 30X, that's really, really good. I mean, I'd say that's even social media worthy. Under low light, Samsung's dedicated night mode helps the S22 Ultra put on a strong showing. Even in badly lit conditions, the images were very much usable. Not just ones shot with the primary, but even the secondary and telephotos. With video, 8K24 is where it tops out at, but 4K60 is what I usually shot on the footage. It's pristine, great colors, impressive detail with solid stabilization. From an optics perspective, the S22 Ultra is the most complete package available today. Now, does this mean there is nothing that beats it? Not exactly. There are some situations where an iPhone or a Google Pixel or even a Oppo Find X5 Pro might do better, but overall, as a package, there's nothing that can quite match what the S22 Ultra has on offer. Now with all that said and done, let's talk about that one issue. Guys, what I'm gonna be talking about next is gonna be from an Indian perspective, but give me a minute and I'll get to the global aspect of things. It's still relevant to you regardless of which part of the world you're in. So moving on, if you remember the days of the Galaxy S4 and the S5, we had this common issue where Samsung would launch their flagship at a very inflated price that would almost immediately drop. For example, the Galaxy S5 launched at 51,500 rupees and within a week, it was being sold at 40. But by the time the Galaxy S7 rolled out, Samsung addressed this, they fixed this. The S7 launched at 48,900 and even a whole six months later, it still sold at the same price. And this carried on over for a few years, but little by little, we seem to have regressed back to the Galaxy S5 era. Now with this S22 Ultra, it launched at 1.1 lakhs in India, $1,200 in the US, 4,700 AED in UAE. Today, a mere two months after the launch, it's selling for 92,000 rupees, 3,900 AED, and 980 in USD in India, UAE, and USA respectively. A drop of 17%. Now if you're thinking, hey Ash, this is the way the market's changed in 2022, I'd say think again. Because the iPhone 13 Pro Max, the phone Samsung's positioning this phone against, it launched late September for $1,100 in US, 1.3 lakhs in India, 4699 dirhams in UAE, and today, about eight months later, it still sells at the same price it launched at in the US and India. Uh, in the UAE, it's dropped a little, you can get it for 4200 but even that's just an 8% drop over eight months compared to the 17% drop we've seen with the S22 Ultra in just two months. Now this is a major issue for two, two reasons. Reason one, the ones getting screwed over are the actual super fans, ones who lined up outside stores or pre-ordered the phone, the ones those are gonna be in my comment section saying, you hate Samsung, that's why you're saying this, or something like that. And reason two, let's say you like me really love this phone and you wanna buy it, 
But when you see the phone drop 17% in two months, you can't go ahead and buy it right now, right? That's not good buying sense. You'd probably have this question in your head on, will it drop another 10% in the next two months? Should it just wait a little longer? And this, in my humble opinion, is the only reason not to buy a S22 Ultra. The question mark in a prospective buyer's head on will it drop more due to Samsung's very volatile pricing. But if you are okay with that gamble and want the best Android has to offer, or if you're watching this video at a time where the prices have stabilized, the S22 Ultra is a no-brainer. It's an amazing phone that, though I paid a lot more than what it sells for today, I have no regrets buying. It's the best experience you can find on an Android phone today. And that is my take on the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. What do you think about this phone? What do you think about my take on it? Let me know in the comments below. And with that, we arrive at the end of today's review video. Thumbs up, thumbs down based on whatever you felt about it. Subscribe, turn on notifications, hit that bell icon if you haven't yet. And thanks for your time. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4E Tech, and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.